Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. They got him. Trump is in his glory right now. You heard the kingpin of the leader of ISIS. His name is Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. The leader of ISIS, dead. Dead, you heard, in northern Syria. According to Trump, he died whimpering, crying, and screaming. He died like a dog, Trump said. He died like a coward. Ah, no U.S. casualties. So last night, uh, U.S. operations killed the leader of ISIS in Syria. Right, the, un- the confirmed leader of ISIS. We'll hear Trump in his own words. Spectacular. Oh, my God. You should watch the whole thing on, uh, on NBC or whatever. So I got it queued up. Let's just watch it because Trump says it all, and it's just a commanding performance. Trump wins, uh, you know, 25 gold stars for this one. Last night, the United States brought the world's number one terrorist leader to justice. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi is dead. He was the founder and leader of ISIS, the most ruthless and violent terror organization anywhere in the world. The United States has been searching for Baghdadi for many years. Capturing or killing Baghdadi has been the top national security priority of my administration. U.S. Special Operations Forces executed a dangerous and daring nighttime raid in northwestern Syria and accomplished their mission in grand style. The U.S. personnel were incredible. I got to watch much of it. No personnel were lost in the operation. No U.S. casualties. None. Zero. Well, a large number of Baghdadi's fighters and companions were killed with him. He died after running into a dead-end tunnel, whimpering and crying and screaming all the way. The compound had been cleared by this time, with people either surrendering or being shot and killed. Eleven young children were moved out of the house and are uninjured. The only ones remaining were Baghdadi in the tunnel, and he had dragged three of his young children with him. They were led to certain death. He reached the end of the tunnel as our dogs chased him down. He ignited his vest, killing himself and the three children. His body was mutilated by the blast. The tunnel had caved in on it, in addition. But test results gave certain, immediate, and totally positive identification. It was him. The thug who tried so hard to intimidate others spent his last moments in utter fear, in total panic and dread, terrified of the American forces bearing down on him. We were in the compound for approximately two hours, and after the mission was accomplished, we took highly sensitive material and information from the raid, much having to do with ISIS, origins, future plans, things that we very much want. I'm not going to play the whole thing, but there's a part where he says that the uh, we they went in the the special forces I think it's Delta Force, and that's the one above the Navy SEALs. Could have been both of them, all, all three of them, all, all of them. They says they they took out body parts. They got actual body parts and conducted a DNA test on the spot to confirm that that was Abu Bakr al Baghdadi, al Baghdadi, the leader of ISIS. Baghdadi's demise demonstrates America's relentless pursuit of terrorist leaders and our commitment to the enduring and total defeat of ISIS and other terrorist organizations. Our reach is very long. As you know, last month we announced that we recently killed 
Hamza bin Laden, the very violent son of Osama bin Laden, who was saying very bad things about people, about our country, about the world. He was the heir apparent to Al-Qaeda, terrorists who oppress and murder innocent people should never sleep soundly, knowing that we will completely destroy them. These savage monsters will not escape their fate, and they will not escape the final judgment of God. Baghdadi has been on the run for many years, long before I took office. But in my direction, as Commander-in-Chief of the United States, we obliterated his caliphate 100 percent in March of this year. Today's events are another reminder that we will continue to pursue the remaining ISIS terrorists to their brutal end. That also goes for other terrorist organizations. They are likewise in our sights. Baghdadi and the losers who worked for him and losers they are. They had no idea what they were getting into. In some cases, they were very frightened puppies. In other cases, they were hardcore killers. But they killed many, many people. Their murder of innocent Americans, James Foley, Stephen Sotloff, Peter Kasich, and Kayla Mueller were especially heinous. The shocking publicized murder of Jordanian pilot, a wonderful young man, spoke to the King of Jordan. They all knew him. They all loved him. He was burned alive in a cage for all to see on the execution of Christians in Libya and <coughs> Egypt as well as the genocidal mass murder of Yazidis, rank ISIS among the most depraved organizations, the history of our world. The forced religious conversions, the orange suits prior to so many beheadings, all of which were openly displayed for the world to see, this was all that Abu Bakr al baghdadi this is what he wanted. This is what he was proud of. He was a sick and depraved man, and now he's gone. Baghdadi was vicious and violent, and he died in a vicious and violent way as a coward running and crying. This raid was impeccable and could only have taken place with the acknowledgement and help of certain other nations and people. I want to thank the nations of Russia, Turkey, Syria, and Iraq. And I also want to thank the Syrian Kurds for certain support they were able to give us. This was a very, very dangerous mission. Thank you as well to the great intelligence professionals who helped make this very successful journey possible. I want to thank the soldiers and sailors, airmen and Marines involved in last night's operation. You are the very best there is anywhere in the world. No matter where you go, there is nobody even close. I want to thank General Mark Milley, and our Joint Chiefs of Staff. And I also want to thank our professionals who work in other agencies of the United States government and were critical to the mission's unbelievable success. Last night was a great night for the United States and for the world. A brutal killer, one who has caused so much hardship and death has violently been eliminated. He will never again harm another innocent man, woman, or child. He died like a dog. 
He died like a coward. The world is now a much safer place. God bless America. Thank you. Wow. Powerful, right? You should watch the rest of it. There's a lot more to it. There's uh, another almost almost a full 45 minutes of Trump answering questions. And it's pretty graphic. It's like Trump really, uh, he really shines. I've always said that Trump in times of war would be the, that's where he would shine. For some reason, his simplicity and his, um, his, his uh, simple logic uh, is, I don't know, is very conducive to, he's not, a, he doesn't overthink things. He sees the problem, he attacks. So Trump gets, uh, you know, scoring points. Now, does, does this mean the end has, has terrorism, has Trump eliminated terrorism in the world by killing Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the leader of ISIS? No, it's like the mafia. Now they're just they're sitting around the table and who's going to take over? Who's going to be the next al-Baghdadi? That's all it really is. Uh, but it's, it's good news. I mean, you know, we're killing our enemies. We find an enemy, we kill our enemy. But it always comes back to, to the initial problem, which is counterinsurgency wars. Right. And Trump makes the great argument that um, that the Kurds and the Syrian, you know, the Turks and the Kurds have been fighting a war for hundreds of years. What are we doing in their civil war? So in the in the um, in the question and answering, he makes that point. It's like it's time to get out of there. He doesn't even want ten people there. Right, so get out. But uh, again, he makes the you know the um, incredible statement that. We're going to leave troops behind to protect the oil. So we're, we're pretty much, you know, they pulled out of that, that, uh, that uh, no-fly zone or that safe zone in Syria, and the Democrats got their balls all in the knot, right, over that. But, uh, but again, Trump is making the point that these people have been fighting for, for hundreds of years. It's their war. What are we doing there? And uh, what are we going to do? Keep changing out the, the regimes, keep changing out the leaders? Uh, and hope that it falls in our way. So, uh, no, we're not going to do that. But nonetheless, the, the leader of ISIS is dead. Um, Trump should enjoy his victory lap. He did a great job. The Delta forces went in there. They blew holes in the side of the walls. They went in. They chased the guy down like a dog, chased him into a tunnel, made him blow himself up, took parts. They took pieces of the guy back and, and ran a DNA test on site. So they know they got the guy, right? But again, it'll only be it'll only be moments if not already a new leader of ISIS has emerged and uh you know. So there you go. Marcus Conte reporting.